Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening, everyone. First tonight, with a focus on COVID vaccines, doctors fear Tasmanians have forgotten to get their flu jabs this year and they're worried about a spike in illness if the uptake remains low. Today, Victoria recorded 11 new COVID cases, prompting fresh fears that state's lockdown will be extended beyond this Friday. Melbourne's outbreak taking a turn for the worse, with 11 new cases recorded, including two discovered yesterday at an aged care home. The city bracing for confirmation on when its fourth lockdown will end, previously announced to finish this Friday. The next few critical days, it'll be so important for us to assess if there's any other a potential change of transmission that we can jump on very quickly to make sure we've got this outbreak fully under control. You don't have to have a, an overactive imagination to imagine that if you had the opportunity for any number of people to come to your household every day over the last 10 days, uh, that it might look very different. The new cases already in quarantine, primary close contacts of other positive cases. These figures um, uh, give us confidence that all the cases are linked but we know that as part of the way ahead, there is still much to do. Tasmania slammed its borders shut to Victoria almost two weeks ago when the outbreak began. There's no intention to open the borders should there be a risk for Tasmanians. The state government ramping up its COVID vaccination program, pharmacists to play a central role. As we see the number of vaccination, vaccines arrive in the state increase, uh, we'll be able to look at how we can further roll out those sites for vaccinations, including pharmacies. Locals are being reminded that seasonal flu is deadly and with the influenza vaccine take up down by one third on last year, people are encouraged to receive an inoculation. Each year in Tasmania between 50 and 100 people die of the flu each year, um, which is far more than we lost from COVID last year. The flu vaccine must be administered at least two weeks apart from the COVID vaccine. Members of St Luke's Health receiving a $20 benefit for the flu vax. Elizabeth O'Neill, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania's major festivals are almost back on track after a year of pandemic headaches. The state government is throwing the sector a $20 million lifeline, with talks underway with six of our largest events. Navigating through COVID's high seas. The past year and a half has been difficult, but we've learnt a lot. We did have to think very hard and do a bit of penny pinching, um, but we're still here and we're going to continue to thrive. Wooden Boat Festival organisers are confident of staying afloat for their next event in 2023 as the state government sinks 20 million into six of Tassie's major festivals. We know that these events are multi-year agreements. Uh, some of them historically have been three years, some of them have been five years. So they're all the things that will be determined throughout the negotiations. Talks are now underway with Monophoma, Dark Mofo, Targa, as well as Junction, and Festivali. We're looking for 2022 to be back to as normal as possible. So at nine o'clock this morning, we had our stallholder applications open online. The event was moved to Utah's stadium in February, but will return to its spiritual home at City Park next year. Beautiful setting, you've got the trees, you've got all the, the beautiful lawns, and we'll be able to have uh, a lot more people. Another key Launceston event is also coming back in September. It's really exciting, it actually starts to feel like there's a big buzz. The challenge for junction organisers, juggling patron expectations with COVID restrictions. You have to work within trying to balance that to be able to make it still to deliver what Junction's all about. All eyes will be on Dark Mofo next week, a case study in how a major event copes in a COVID climate. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. Police are still searching for the men who held up a St Leonard's store on Saturday afternoon. Two men entered before the shop before 4pm, threatening the owner with guns and making off with cigarettes and cash. Police say the men fled in a stolen white Ford Courier Ute, which they are yet to locate. Anyone who witnessed the incident or has seen the Ute is asked to contact authorities. The state government has reached out to Launceston's Quest Hotel after its snap closure left guests out in the cold over the weekend. Other hotels scrambled to take in the stranded travellers who found out their bookings had fallen through at the last minute. 
The quest for urgent accommodation opened the floodgates at the Aldington Boutique Hotel. It was busy. <laughs> it was busy. Owner James Marshall was fully booked on Saturday night when the nearby quest went into liquidation. It was up probably 40% than what it normally is at that time of the year. Stunned guests claim they were told over text at the last minute they had nowhere to stay, while others say they turned up to find the doors had been locked. The government has engaged with the operator and we're working with them to understand the situation further. Quest head office is chasing affected guests and says they'll be offered a full refund. Staff are also being contacted to settle any unpaid wages. For those still standing, the shock shutdown was a handy boost after a dire 2020 and Victoria's recent lockdown. Although some of those bookings balanced out because Victorians already travelling in Tasmania extended their stays. So they just decided what's the point of heading home and locking ourselves up at home, we might as well continue to enjoy Tasmania. Quest is now working with the franchisee's liquidator to see if it can take over the hotel in the short term. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. A heartbroken family is pleading for help to track down its lost pet after its support dog escaped while being picked up from Hobart Airport. Qantas says it continues to search for the Maltese Cross while facing accusations it failed to follow procedure when releasing the much-loved pooch. For Loretta Chobe and her family, moving from Perth to Tasmania was meant to be a new chapter. Instead, it's been a nightmare. The family's dog Snoopy missing since Wednesday night, after a routine pickup at Qantas's freight depot at Hobart Airport went wrong. The cage was put on the ground in an open area, um, not an enclosed area. The staff member opened the cage and Unfortunately, Snoopy ran out. Despite numerous searches, he's yet to be found. The Maltese cross crucial in providing support to Loretta's daughter. She has autism, so she, she's, um, she likes to feel the comfort of the softness of him and he's a very calming dog. Claiming Qantas breached its own policies when releasing the beloved pooch. If this was someone famous that had a dog like the Queen's Corgi, I'm sure that they'd be running and doing what they need to do to find this dog. In a statement, Qantas says its Hobart team is assisting and has notified the RSPCA, saying it understands it's a stressful situation and hopes Snoopy is found safe as soon as possible. The family have thanked those who have reached out to them via social media. They're encouraging anyone in the Hobart Airport area to keep a lookout for this beloved family pet. We love and adore this little man and um, we would do anything to get him back. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. Our status as a mounting biking mecca has been confirmed with Tasmania set to host two rounds of the Enduro World Series next year. It's the first time any country has hosted back-to-back -back rounds. Tassie's trails are set to be the focus of the mountain biking world once again. The Enduro World Series is returning and this time serving up a second course. Really good to see that it's coming back to Tassie. Um, the double header, it's going to be great. Getting the first two rounds should be sweet. Maydina set to host the event for the first time when the series kicks off in March next year. Derby featuring in the schedule for the third time. The terrain here is unbeatable. Um, it's the best in Australia in my opinion and just the vibe that this town gives off. A Monday in the off-season, Derby was sleepy today, but thousands visited the town in 2017 and 2019 when the EWS took centre stage. The booming biking sector is now a huge source of income for local businesses. Pretty much most of it, we do all the breakdowns as they come through, all the shuttles, everything to get to Derby is transportation. So Yeah, they, a lot come for burgers and breakfast. If there was no mountain bikers, there wouldn't be much employment in the area. A whole new tourism industry has popped up in the town, but some fear it's being threatened by nearby logging. It completely undermines the experience to ride through a clear fell or to ride through a forest that is suffering the after effects of damage from clear fell and burning. They say the mountain bike industry has proven to be a winner and it needs to be protected. Sustainable Timber Tasmania said in a statement that two areas adjacent to the Krushkas Trail are being considered for logging this summer but there will be limited impact on mountain bike trails. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. A Tasmanian bakery has helped deliver a $30,000 caffeine hit for Speak Up Stay Chatty. 
Banjos sold 60,000 large coffees last month, with 50 cents from each one going towards the charity's programs. To have those dollars allows us to sit back and, and come up with fresh initiatives um, to be able to you know, look at expanding our reach and getting into areas that we haven't just yet. It's the seventh year the bakery has held the fundraiser. Richie Port has described finally winning the Criterium de Dauphiné as like a Tour de France victory. Twice the bridesmaid, Port fended off a number of attacks to claim the title by 17 seconds. Richie Port knows the French Alps well. He's ridden eight times in the Criterium de Dauphiné, but never has the yellow jersey stayed until the end, until last night. This is a huge moment in Australian cycling. Three in the top ten, Richie at the top, he'll bring home yellow. In typical Port fashion, the road to victory was fraught with potential heartbreak. Bike problems gobbled up valuable time. Then, just six kilometres from home, his teammate Geraint Thomas, such a crucial shadow during the eight-stage race, suddenly had the Tasmanian fending for himself. Oh, Geraint Thomas has gone down. That highlights the risk. So Port is now on his own. But this time, fate was kind. A bruised and battered Thomas caught up to the field, driven by a selfless determination not to let Port be runner-up for a third time. He's not worried about defending third place for himself. He's only worried about Richie Port. Port didn't win the stage. That honour went to Mark Padun. But his 17-second buffer on Kazakhstan's Alexei Luksenko was what mattered. Finally on the top step, a victory well earned. And family home in Tasmania will be just thrilled to see this family at the front of his mind. You know, all the sacrifices, time away from my wife and two kids, you know, it's, it's worth it. Port and Thomas will flip roles in the Tour de France when the Tasmanian becomes a support act. To win this race just means so, so much to me, you know. It's, it's a, a race I've always enjoyed and uh, to finally win it, 36 years old, it's a, a sweet moment. He is the race's oldest winner in its 74-year history. Meanwhile, Launceston's Jake Burtwistle's lead in to the Olympics is less than ideal. He was slow out of the water in the World Triathlon Series Championship event in Leeds last night. He made up time to be back with the leading bunch on the bike, but he faded in the run to cross the line in 22nd place, nearly three and a half minutes behind British winner Alex Yee. Tasmanian Football Hall of Famer Matthew Armstrong will take the reins of the Devils under-19 boys team for the back end of the NAB League season. Armstrong is already employed by AFL Tasmania, working with talent in the state south. He will replace Cameron Joyce, who has been named coach of the Gold Coast Suns AFLW side. Armstrong will enter the role at the end of the month. OK, running through the Crips TSL Player of the Year results now after round 10. Three handy votes for Jay Foon, the Northern Bombers captain, top pick in the fixture with Clarence. Another front runner, Jay Blackberry, takes the biggest slice from the Blues-Tigers match. And Glenorchy's Nathan Blowfield was best to field in the side's 19-point win over Lauderdale. Foon has jumped into the lead on 13 votes, clear of a Launceston trio of Jake Hines, D Jay Blackberry and Dylan Riley. In local soccer, Devonport is relishing its chance to take on Glenorchy in next week's Laco Seljak Cup final. The strikers moved within three points of the night, sat the top of the NPL table after crushing Riverside 6-1 on Saturday. I think the guys are, are ready, we're, we'll prepare well, um, we'll do our, our research on nights, haven't seen uh, them so far this year. Meanwhile in the women's, Clarence is also on a high after thrashing bitter rival Olympia 6-1. I think they did have a couple injuries, so maybe not a full squad on their end. But um, yeah, we I would argue we, we came out and played quite well. The Zebras have a week off due to the statewide cup final. Good evening. Hobart reached a high of 18 today. 16 right across Launceston, Burnie and Devonport. 19 was the state's top today at Friendly Beaches. Strawn and Grove 17 and 15 at Low Head. On the close-up shows a band of high cloud across Tasmania with a frontal cloud band approaching from the west. Further out, cloud is seen streaming over the southeast of the mainland ahead of a frontal cloud band that is moving over South Australia. Tomorrow, a cold front is slowly crossing Tasmania and the mainland. North to northwesterly winds tomorrow, 20 to 30 knots, swells up to 4 metres in the west and south and up to 1 metre in the north. A gale warning is current for western and northwestern coastal waters, a strong wind warning for remaining coastal waters and the channel, and a flood watch warning is current for northwestern, northern and northeastern river basins.
Tomorrow's forecast now rain across Hobart and Taralea, 13 in Adventure Bay. In the north, rain in Launceston, 13 across Devonport and Bridport. Burnie and Strawn tomorrow, 12, windy with rain in Marrawal. 15 across Strawn and Whitemark and rain increasing at Swansea. Looking ahead to the three-day forecast, Wednesday showers about the northeast and central areas. Thursday, strong southeasterly winds in the northeast. And Friday, showers across the east, southeast and central areas. Capital cities, 18 and partly cloudy in Perth tomorrow. Showers in Adelaide and mostly sunny in Darwin. And currently Hobart, partly cloudy in 16, mostly cloudy in 14 across Launceston and Devonport. That's all for weather tonight, Kim. Now that's your news for now. We'll have updates throughout the evening. Stay warm. Good night.